Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Ron and today is a repotting video. So for the past week and a half, I was on the big island of Hawaii visiting family and I came across a wishlist plant in my very hometown which is a very small town by the name of Honoka'a and it is located on the big island of Hawaii on the north shore and the population is about 2,000 people. So one of the plants that I am repotting today that I found in a cool plant shop actually it's an art gallery slash plant shop which I stumbled upon while walking through the main street. I'll put the link to his Instagram and website down in the description box below, but the art is so cool. This guy uses a lot of colors, uh, sort of kind of abstract art, but that's the kind of art that I've been wanting to put in my living room. So maybe one of these days, I'm gonna hit this guy up and purchase one of his art because they're so cool. He also had a pretty good selection of houseplants. One of them being this gorgeous Cebu Blue Pothos. And let me show you the pot that it was originally in. Right here, how cool is this? It's a hedgehog, if you can't tell, sorry. It's kind of bright, but so cool. So this plant was sitting in here. Hey guys, well, I am interrupting this video really quick because I was editing it and I realized it was taking too long. So I'm breaking up this video into two parts. The first part is gonna be me potting up the two new plants that I got. And the second part is gonna be potting up the wishlist plants that I got in the previous video. So stick around for part two. It's gonna be just as exciting and at the end of this video, I'm gonna be showing you like the progress of these two plants. Yeah, wait until the end of the video and I'll show you snippets of what those two plants currently look like four days later. So, see you later. So yes, I actually brought this plant with me on the plane back here to Vegas. So Hawaii has all of these strange laws regarding the import and export of a lot of goods, including plants. If you don't know, when you're arriving to Hawaii from basically anywhere else in the world, you are required to fill out a form at the end of the plane trip, and you have to declare plants that you are bringing into the state. I didn't have any plants bringing into Hawaii, but I did have a plant or two um, I'll talk about this one later. Departing Hawaii. So when you're departing Hawaii, you're not required to fill out that form. It gets tricky because if you bring a plant with you, it is subject to inspection. And if you don't follow the guidelines, then they might confiscate that plant from you. But the cheat sheet is basically, you can bring a plant with you from Hawaii as long as you remove all of the soil from the plant. But the bottom line is that you cannot bring native soil with you on the plane. And that's mainly due to concerns with pests. So they don't want you bringing pests from Hawaii. They also don't want you bringing pests to Hawaii. I don't know if there's a list of plants that they don't want you to bring back and forth. I know that soil is like probably the top reason. But yeah, that's basically what happened with this plant. I bought this plant from that shop and I removed all of the soil. I then rinsed the roots really good and then wrapped it in a moist paper towel, threw it in this Ziploc bag, and then I wrapped it in a um, paper bag, and then I put that onto my carry-on. I would suggest you to put plants in a carry-on versus a check-in bag, just so that you have more control on how you're actually handling the plant so I was being really careful with this one and as we can see it's in really good shape but yeah let's take it out of the bag and then let's take a look at what the roots look like it's 
サラー Okay, so it's been at least 24 hours since my arrival back here. I think this plant has been okay sitting in this moist paper towel and the, the roots look okay as well. But what's interesting about this one, guys, um, when I was taking a look at the leaves, I noticed some slight variegation. I'm not too familiar with how these leaves grow, um, but I know that they have this sort of silverish, bluish tint to the leaves in certain lighting, and that's why it's called Cebu Blue, I think. Um, but yeah, this leaf right here has variegation. If we look at the leaf that came after that one, the variegation continues, so that's pretty cool. Um, there is an incision right here that occurred. So I know that whoever was handling this plant before me realized it was variegated maybe, and then took a propagation off of that. But there are a couple of other vines on here that do have that variegation, like this one right here. It's very, very slight. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Here's another one. So yeah, that is amazing, actually. This, with the pot, I paid 30 US dollars. So not too bad because I did get a really cute pot out of it. This is a ceramic pot. Um, I'm not gonna be planting it directly in here. I'm gonna be, of course, putting a plant in a white nursery pot. And I hope it fits. Let's see. Not bad. It kind of is sunken in a little bit, but that's okay. We will make it work. Also, one thing I do want to point out about bringing plants from Hawaii is that after you check in your bag, well, actually, if you don't know the travel guidelines and requirements, if you're flying out of Hawaii, any bag that you have to check in, you have to scan it through their agricultural department scanner. I don't know the technical term for that, but it's a scanner that you have to put your bag through to get it officially inspected. And it's basically an x-ray machine. And then they will put a sticker around the handle on your bag, which will let everyone know that it's been inspected properly. But prior to that, I asked the person that was at that station and said, hey, I have a plant and I took the soil out of it. Does it need to be inspected? And they asked me what kind of plant it was. I said, hey, sorry, Pia is like chewing on something. What are you chewing on? Anyway, I said that I removed all of the soil. They asked what kind of plant it was. I said it was a type of pothos. And then, I don't know, they, that person just said, as long as it's in my carry-on, I should be okay. This was on the big island. So I then got my bag from the x-ray and then checked it in, brought this plant with me in my carry-on already in the moist paper towel, paper bag and all of that. And I went through the other check-in to reach my gate. They didn't ask about this plant. I'm pretty sure they saw that it was a plant in the bag, but they didn't bring it up. But that was on the big island. So I was cleared, everything was good. I got onto the plane. Anytime I'm traveling from Hawaii or to and from Hawaii, I have to go through Oahu. So the city of Honolulu, which is the capital of Hawaii. That is the main international airport. From there, I will then have to take a flight to the big island. So I have to do like a layover in Honolulu before I reach my destination on the big island. And that's the same thing going back. So from the big island, got into the plane, and then I went to Oahu, the Honolulu International Airport, and had a two hour layover. So I hung out for a bit, but to get to my gate for the departure to the mainland, I did have to go through another one of those agricultural scanners. And there I told the person 
that I had a plant, I removed all of the soil, is it okay? Does it need to be inspected? And this one actually, this person asked what kind of plant it was and they actually took the plant out of the bag to inspect it. They didn't take it out of the um, moist paper towel and Ziploc, but I did tell them that I removed all of the soil. You could probably already tell that there was no soil in there. They just looked at it for like five seconds. There was another guy there. This person asked the other guy, what kind of plant is this? Is it okay? It's a house plant. And they cleared me. So that was it. It's very easy. As long as you buy a plant from the store, you should be okay because house plants that are sold through stores usually are already cleared of like pests or native soil. As long as you remove whatever medium that you have in the pot and it's just bare root, you should be okay to bring a plant with you on the plane. So with that being said, the other method to bring a plant from Hawaii is by mailing the plant to yourself. So that's what I did last year with, it was a Calathea green fusion. It had some white variegation, so I don't know if it's a white fusion or green fusion. Nevertheless, all of the variegation disappeared, so it's probably just a green fusion at this point. If you want to mail a plant out of Hawaii, you have to get it inspected at, what is it called? Their agricultural department, which on the big island, they have two departments. One is in Hilo, one is in Kona. I did the one in Hilo and their inspection service is free. So all you have to do is bring your plant with you along with the shipping materials. So you need to have a shipping box and whatever packing material that you wanna use because what they do is they will inspect the plant right there and then they'll ask you to package it up. And then after you seal it with tape, they will put a stamp on it saying it has been inspected. With this method, you have to make sure that there is no soil. The plant in question, the Calathea Green Fusion, I didn't remove it from the pot, but they cleared it anyway because it did not have soil. It had, I think it was planted in pumice, black pumice, but they inspected it very thoroughly and made sure there was no pests. So they packaged it up and then sealed it. And then I took it to, I think it was FedEx, paid the $70 of shipping, even though this plant costed $15. Yeah, but definitely worth it, okay. If you do it that way, I would suggest you to do USPS if you are in the United States and use a flat rate box. It's probably way cheaper that way. So yeah, that's all the information you might need um, if you want to bring plants with you from Hawaii. If you have any questions, let me know. I might be able to answer them. But yeah, enough rambling. Now let's get to the potting up. The soil that I have in front of me is pre-mixed. I have in here some potting soil mixed in with some charcoal, pumice, coconut, husk, sphagnum moss, a bunch of worm castings, and also I've added some extra peat moss. So I've been experimenting with peat moss lately because peat moss is supposed to slowly raise the acidity level in the pH of your medium. The tap water that I have here, I use tap water to water all of my plants, is very hard. In addition to that, it's also very high in al alkaline. So the alkali 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 alkaline, alkalinity? <laughs> so the alkaline level is very high, which means the pH level is quite high. It's like at least seven according to my meter. Thingy. Um, so I want to lower it down because houseplants tend to like pH levels between like 5 and 7 pH. All of my plants in here have given me readings of at least 7 to 8 pH. Peat moss is acidic by nature so over time it should lower the pH level so that's why I've added some in here. But yeah so as you can see it's very chunky. This is the soil I'm going to be using for 
the plants that I'm going to be repotting today. So it should be very easy. I'm going to be adding some sphagnum moss to the bottom of this four inch white nursery pot to catch some of the soil from spilling out in the bottom. Oh, also, I don't know if you've noticed, but my sweater, my hoodie here is from Honoka, Hawaii. And this whole time, I didn't know that this shop downtown had merchandise or clothing that said Honoka, Hawaii, because it's quite rare, actually. The town that I grew up in is very small, like I said earlier. You cannot find any clothing with this name anywhere else. Usually you'd find clothing that say like Hilo Hawaii, Kona Hawaii, Waikiki or whatever, but definitely not Honoka. So as a proud Honoka boy, I snatched it, which is very ironic because this shop was still there growing up. I used to live in the very heart of the main street of this little town and right above my driveway is the shop that I purchased this from. And I have I had only probably walked through that store like twice in my childhood and I had no idea. It's just one of those things where you don't really appreciate until you're older, right? And especially now living far away, I can flash this wherever I go and say, hey, this is where I grew up. You probably don't know where it is, but here I am. So we'll just kind of shove this in here. Pothos in general don't mind being root bound a little bit. So this should work. Okay, there we go. How does that look? Oh wait, let me put it in the hedgehog pot. That is super cute. Let's put it next to Pia right there. Do not eat the plant, Pia. Okay, next plant is, this right here is called a Hawaiian bamboo orchid. Now, this one wasn't really on my wish list. I didn't know this plant existed. Who knew orchids come in bamboo forms? But take a look at the foliage that is already starting to grow in this little packaging here. Very interesting foliage. So this one I got from a little kiosk at the airport in Honolulu, which is very interesting because they have prepackaged plants that are already cleared for shipping um, or for transporting in the flight. And it doesn't have to undergo any extra inspection. But there is a notice on here on the back. Oh, there's also some interesting tidbits of information there on how to actually get this plant to thrive. Here on the bottom in red says, Hawaii Department of Agriculture Plant Quarantine Branch, Nematode Certificate Number 0102. So this actually has a certificate. Nematode, that's interesting. So it says here, this is to certify that the plant materials in the shipment meet California's burrowing and reniform nematode quarantine requirements and originated from a nursery participating under the terms of California's master permit for the shipment of nursery stock from Hawaii to California, permit number QC650. So I guess that is just very specific to California and their very interesting laws. This one is actually grown in a nursery from Hilo, Hawaii. So the very island that I grew up on. What's interesting about this orchid is that here on the back, it says plant bulbs in potting soil from a garden shop. So even though there's moist sphagnum moss in here, this type of orchid actually grows in soil. So it's not technically an epiphyte. It doesn't grow on the surfaces of other trees. It actually grows in the soil. So that's why I have just one big bucket of my chunky soil mix. So it should grow in that perfectly fine. The scientific name on here says Arundina bambusifolia. And once again, this is what the flowers look like. 
yeah, pretty cool. I can't wait for this one to grow and bloom for me one day. So let's just go ahead and unpackage it very carefully. It's so amazing how these little cuttings can just grow and sustain in this little packaging material. Oh yeah, so back to that kiosk. They have a bunch of these orchids. They have a lot of bromeliad cuttings, cordyline cuttings, AKA Hawaiian tea leaf plants, a lot of different types of orchids, hibiscus, plumeria cuttings. But yeah, um, they had a lot of plants and cuttings for sale at this little kiosk. This one I paid $10 for. This is one of them. It is just starting to push out some of those really interesting leaves. And it has a couple of established roots on there already. But here is what it looks like. It seems like they develop bulbs and that is what you can use to propagate because that's where the roots look like they come out of but yeah this is the other one with more of those leaves this one doesn't have a lot of root development it does have one tiny root if you can tell right there so yeah this plant grows like a bamboo so very interesting shape for an orchid so while i was in hawaii i was actually on the lookout for chocolate orchids. I don't know if you know that these types of orchids exist, but they're called chocolate orchids. I think the botanical name is Oncidium. It's a type of Oncidium, but the nickname is Shari Baby. I think it goes by a couple of other names, but the flowers, they apparently smell like chocolate. The only time I saw one in person was in my previous Hawaii trip. I saw one and I took a picture of it at Home Depot and I didn't know that's what it was. Um, otherwise I would have put the flower to my nose and then give it a whiff and then maybe eat it right there. But yeah, I went back. I didn't go to Home Depot this time even though I very much wanted to. I did go to Walmart, but I didn't find any orchids there. So let me know if you've heard of chocolate orchids before and if they actually do smell like chocolate because I am, I have a sweet tooth. Okay, so I'm just gonna be making a hole in here and then just sticking it in like that. Being careful not to overlap that foliage. So with this one, I've actually thought about putting it into LECA, but being that they do grow in soil, I'm gonna see just how well they do in soil before I experiment with LECA, if at all. I hope this one is happy in this very, very chunky mix. There we go. Look how cute that looks. It just looks like blades of grass. Oh, by the way, I did add a little bit of mosquito bits in here just to kind of help with my mild to moderate fungus gnat infestation. Okay, so here are the two plants four days later. Let's look at the bamboo orchid first. And you can see that the baby right there, that tiny sprout, has actually grown quite a bit. Here it is in more detail. Let's zoom into that. So cute. So this one has actually been sitting in the Millsbo cabinet getting all of that high humidity in there. It's sitting at around 80 to 94% humidity, but 
every day I'll open it up and kind of air it out a little bit just so that it doesn't get too humid in there. I haven't watered it since, but the mix still does feel somewhat moist. It might need to be watered again after three or so more days. But yeah, it is sitting in the middle shelf, so it's not getting a lot of the light from the grow lights. So I would say it's like in partial shade. But yeah, it's growing very nicely. Can't wait for it to grow even more and then see some flower spikes. It probably will take a whole year at least to see some progression in the flower spikes because orchids do take a while to bloom. And look at that one, speaking of orchids, my phalaenopsis in the background right there. So pretty. But yeah, anyway, that is the Hawaiian bamboo orchid. And then here on this side is the Cebu blue pothos. I don't know if you can tell if there's any updates on the growth, but the leaves have perked up and have started to face the grow light. So that is awesome. That lets me know that the plant is still active and growing. Here you can see some of the new growth starting to unfurl. The new leaves on this plant start off really small, but don't let that fool you because that will eventually grow into more of like this size right here. I do want to put a stake in this one and then wrap the vines onto the stake so that hopefully the leaves will get bigger and bigger because Cebu Blue actually will develop fenestrations if you let them grow up a moss pole or a stake. So I think that's pretty cool. I love the silver on there. So cool. And as I mentioned earlier, some of the leaves on here do have that variegation as you can see, which is weird because this leaf compared to this leaf is more green. But if we look at that variegation spec right there, that is the classic silver blue color of the plant. So I feel like, I don't know if that means this is reverting or if it's actually variegation because that spec should be the whole leaf right either way i think that's really cool because that does kind of continue onto the next leaf here and it's too early to tell if it'll continue in this one but based on the previous leaves it looks like it will continue so that's pretty cool and of course this super cute planter this hedgehog with a full head of hair. This plant has been sitting right here on this Ikea plant stand that I just got, which is really nice. I don't know if I want it to be in that spot permanently. I might have to shift some plants around, but on that side, I have my Syndapsis pictus exotica. And behind there is a dying bonsai, which I don't know why I'm showing you that. But yeah, that's the Cebu Blue Pothos. Anyway, that's about it for part one, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't yet already, plant scribe. As I mentioned earlier, stay tuned for part two, because that'll be me potting up the Queen Anthurium Philodendron Melanochrysum and the Anthurium Clarinervium. Yeah, I think that's it. But for now, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!